All right, everybody, welcome back here. Uh, we are in the round of four at the Buddies Pro Shop Singles. Uh, again, we have our four bowlers right here in front of us. Uh, John Matunis, Amanda Broge, Timothy West, and Tyler Levesque. Uh, again, this is going to be another Eliminator-style format where the top two will advance to the finals and the uh, lower scores, unfortunately, will be eliminated. Uh, we just finished up here with a round of eight, and again, after a long, brutal day of bowling, uh, we've gotten down to our, our final four bowlers here. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Sorry joining me here in the booth, uh, I have... Uh, Ball Driller to the Stars, El Jefe, as Bruce calls you, Mr. Chris Forey. Hello, everybody. Good evening. And uh, joining me here again is uh, Miss Janine Forey. Hello. It's been a fun having, sitting here, being able to do this. That's not going to get there. Oh, why? Wow, it did get there. Boy, that ball call you a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he missed it by a couple, and I'm like, it's just going to oh, trickle down there. Tim West has been on fire on this pair. He's been here twice, 230, 250. And I believe he was your pick. Um, yes, he looks very confident. He's in a good rhythm. And the trick is lane 36 always. In the, that's why we used to bowl action on this pair because uh, generally speaking, when you're by a pole in this building, in this section of the house, the ball hooks more, but the pole on 36 doesn't work that way. Interesting. Yeah, so that's the one pair that always was tricky when we would try to get people to bowl against us. In the old days when people actually bowled action because <laughs> you can't get anybody to bowl action on this stuff. You know, Skiana said, can you run this? I'll get people to bowl against me. Yeah. All right, Amanda stepping up here, uh, leaves the 4-7. Uh, Tyler, unfortunately, starting with a split 2-8-10. Uh, but again, first frame, yeah, very early. early. He's been bowling phenomenal, so. Yeah. I have to and say all four have been bowling very well today. That, is, that is a good point. That scoring, is a good point. Uh, yeah, Matunas, other than game one, which he shoots 1-8, other than that, he obviously the scoring pace has been way higher than I anticipated. And even the last round, halfway through the game, where I'm at least calling 210. And it skyrocketed in the back half of the game past that. Okay, just looking at the qualifying scores here, um, you were high qualifier Saturday night at uh, 83 over. It's good to be a senior. <laughs> this morning, <laughs> uh, Mike Lickstein was our high qualifier this uh, in our 9 a.m. squad at 122 over. That's interesting. They don't have senior next to his name. That's funny. I was actually going to point that out. He, didn't, he must not have. I wonder why that is, because the system is supposed to pull all that over. I see. When you have 30-plus titles, you might get those special privileges where you don't need the senior next to your name anymore. Yeah. Um, and then double by Matunas to start. This afternoon, Mr. Nathan Lu uh, Rue Lejoie, yep. which I believe is the way you pronounce it, yes. uh, yep. went 179. That's over. very good. Uh, the guys from Canada came down. Um, and that's a long trek for them. I mean, that, the trek here was probably eight hours. So when I was uh, in Albany... I saw Nathan at a lot of events. Uh, he bowled a they lot. Love the bowl. Yeah, they love the bowl. Yeah, they they bowl everything. They like the tougher patterns. Um, yep. And what's interesting about those guys, they travel, and they don't all live, like, say, in the same 30-mile radius. They live, like, four hours from each other, and they connect somewhere. It's amazing that what those guys do to go bowl. Right, Tim West stepping up here Bouncing on 36. off the gutter. It's not going to get there. Now it's not. Right. Wash out. You said 36 was going to be the tough lane. Uh, yeah. Whoever figures that one out is probably going to advance. Yep. And again, uh, just a reminder to everybody, uh, we are at Neva event number 992, Buddy's Pro Shop singles here at Nutmeg Bowl, uh, Fairfield, Connecticut. We're only eight away from number 1,000, which, again, is unbelievable. Yeah, oh, you ain't kidding. It's going to be a great uh, event. I believe we have $5,000 currently added to that, and possibly more money. Yeah, and um, rumor has it they may be opening up an additional Saturday squad. There, there will be two Saturday There's squads. There's going now. Okay, so now it's confirmed. We're gonna I from one, I, we've had enough conversations. I believe that is a 100%. awesome. Awesome. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. A lot of extra added money. It's going to be a great weekend. Everybody's looking forward to it. I believe there might be squad leader things. Almost like how if anybody ever bowled Lustig's back in the day, you're too young for that. But Lustig was a, a tournament similar to Neva's out in Long Island, and they used to do like a big event, and they would do a squad leader pots to try and get people to come out so it'd be like you know come bowl at the first squad on Saturday and you might get such and such money to be squad leader just automatically everybody somebody's gonna get it you know so I it was unfortunate you know I didn't get to bowl those tournaments I'm not yeah. you know I wasn't around then but I've heard many stories 
Oh, there, uh, there were a lot of good stories about <laughs> a lot that. Of good yeah, a lot of good stories from those story. tournaments. Yeah, barns and, I mean, guys would fly into bowl. Ooh. And she moves off the bucket and then it bounces and goes the other way. Yeah, I mean, you had, you had, you had guys like Barnes who came in, uh, Kurt Pilon. Oh, man, I could go down. Tommy Jones, and Tommy was very young, so he came at the last one. But you had these guys just show up and then there'd be action somewhere, but you saw some of the, the best the guys, pretty much the bowl high rollers and stuff like that, would fly in just to bowl that bowl these two or three events a year that offer 16 grand on top. Yeah, it, uh, unbelievable. And, and again, like I said, I was never fortunate enough to get to witness those events, bowl those events. But um, our good friend here, Mr. Chris Vialli, in his Mega Buck tournament, yep, is he's doing. Trying, he's trying to bring him back everything he can to bring that back. Yeah. Um, and I, for anybody that wasn't involved in that tournament last year, it was unbelievable. Yep. More money this year, more squads. I think it's going to be – I think that's going to be a, a great event. And yeah, that's yeah. where I would hear all the stories from is from Chris when I, you know, oh, working absolutely. from Cambridge and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I tell Chris uh, that's Black Friday weekend for us, so I can't ever – you know, last year I couldn't bowl. I said, unfortunately, I can't support it again. But I do like the concept of it and all the things he's got going on. Ooh. Lower 10. Jeez. Um, I like all the things he has working with it. Um and, I, and obviously, I think he's up to like sixty grand in sponsor money he's picked up. If I'm somewhat close to that, I I think that's he, that's he might be close. over that now. So I know the last call was right around that number. All right, so Amanda looking for a bounce back frame here on thirty five. That's good. That looks good. Got flat ten out though. Mm, flat ten. So yeah. just looking at the scores here, um, John is on a triple. Uh, we've got. Amanda here, spare, spare, open, uh, looking for nine, spare. Tim, strike, open, open. And then Tyler, open, strike, spare. Uh, so it looks like the, the pace is a little slower right now on this pair than what we've seen. Um, yep. Again, Matunas is the only, he's got a triple to start. So looking to jump out to a pretty big lead here. This would uh, be go a long way. And, and Chris, if you don't mind, just kind of explaining the pattern here again for anybody who might be now just joining us, because yeah. again, this was a special pattern for this event. Yeah, custom pattern built by the tournament committee slash Tom Hankey, who works with the uh, sorry, not tournament committee, the lane pattern committee. Forty-five foot pattern, about thirty-two mils, pretty close to that. So a lot more volume. And this year, a lot of the patterns they've been designing have been in, in that range. Um, pretty much oiled from four to four. Oh, Ooh, that brings it right high. back to the field. Um, pretty much oil four to four. There's no oil on the first three boards on either side. Like not a drop from the foul yeah. line to the to the pin deck. Um, I think they played. Tyler's like the guy that we actually see hooking a little bit. Uh, obviously two hands, high rev rate, getting a ball going forward to pick it up. But uh, everybody else you're gonna see off the corner because they're trying to use that early hook on the lane that where there's no oil placed. Uh, like I said, they, they played very tight and pretty much a defined hook spot. Tyler's about the only guy you'll see, but his ball still needs to go to the right to get some hook. Absolutely. Uh, but it was pretty much a de pattern designed to let's see who is willing to throw it there. Absolutely. And this is also the uh, the third stop for the, the you know the Paul Forey yes. Memorial Tournament. Um, Janine earlier, you know, she she spoke about Paul said some some words and you uh you spoke this morning before i did the tournament this morning started. yep i try to say something in the last two years they gonna make me cry but i, I do try to say some See, things about you. my about my father <laughs> um he's the reason we're here as i said this morning into my thing i don't have my phone in front of me but i wrote i did try to write some words down but 30 years we've been here at nutmeg bowl and my father had an idea great shot by tim west he had this uh you know we, were, we had a fam little family pro shop in our basement and uh, my father. We used to go there for our balls to be drilled. Yep. That's my, awesome. And yeah, my father, I thought was one of the, still to this day, I consider him like the greatest ball driller, or one of the best I've ever watched for, you know, not many guys had mill machines back then. So he did everything by hand. Mm. He he worked them out. He customized them. He, he would have people throw them to him in the basement, just in the air. And he could tell if it came off your hand the right way, if it was going to be right or not. And um yeah, I mean, we learned a lot from him. Oh, Amanda with the trip, the four, four. seven. Yeah, she's got a little confused there. Um, yeah, and he, I think he just was a guy that he started bowling when he was about 25. My mom took him on her first date. He never was in a bowling center in his life and became his passion, and he put 
took that passion and besides bowling he was a pretty decent bowler bowled some tour stops and everything but his passion became giving it back to everybody else and teaching obviously his sons my brother and myself and my stepbrother scott really teaching us bowling and then uh traveling i mean and i'll be the first to tell anybody we're, we come, we're a family that doesn't come from much money at all my father spent every hard dime he could earn sending us taking us to jbt's four hours away every weekend yeah. mm -hmm. for from age 10 to age 18. that was his passion you know he wanted us to bowl and uh besides that little shop we had that's that was his thing he ran jbt's with chuck and he would coach every kid he would help everybody out if somebody needed help he was there for him and uh so when we came here you know unfortunately he passed away in 98 it's about seven years after here and uh he always told me he said you know one day the shop's gonna be the biggest thing that you know one of the bigger things people see in bowling and i just never believed him and i think obviously when he passed away we tried to make that happen and uh it's been a uh, it's been a great for our family as i tell everybody you know bowling's been great for us for janine myself my son right. christian um it's allowed us to meet so many people that's the fabulous part uh, amazing people we've met everywhere while doing I mean, something that we love to uh, do yep and you know we get to travel we get to do things i mean here i mean last last week a lot of people have seen i went to milwaukee from milwaukee to vegas to watch my nephew bowl yeah it's uh, brandon Bowen unbelievable bowl. uh you know work with some of the best bowlers in the world we're fortunate that we get to sponsor some of them and uh it's been a, it's been a real dream and like and it's all because of my father if if uh if he didn't send me here when i was 19 years old and said you're going to connecticut to run a pro shop I wouldn't be here none of this would have been possible when i met my wife uh oh. janine here he she said he played it. matchmaker yeah he did he, he did he's like you need to make a call <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do I got to lose? Well, the thing is, though, we didn't even realize oh, it until a couple corner. months after he had passed. Cause oh, I like, knew. He told me when he came and what, oh, he, what he did. He didn't tell me that. Yeah. But he he, um, he used to stop by and, and see us and my father, because he and my father were good friends. Mm. And, you know, he just Get up the hill. stopped by one day and mm. on his way back home and saw my mom and said, Here's Chris's phone number. Have Janine call him, and he just, you know. Yeah, he had an idea. He he imagine did. the concept of picking up the phone and making a phone call. Yeah. Oh, it was all about yeah. We I, now you I send a text, and then if they don't text you back, you get you, you know. got ghosted. Yeah. And you you think got ghosted. They hate exactly. You. No, I had a no. Yeah. <laughs> they think you hate you. Why are you ghosting me? Why are you ignoring me? Oh, I might be working. You know things like that. You know, but yeah, it's uh. Yeah, he's uh. Like I said, no, he, it's pretty much everything I I my life is going a certain way because of ideas or dreams that he had um and you also like followed through with that you stayed true to your family values you stayed true to all those life lessons that he gave you yeah we try to you know we try passing and hopefully we can pass on to our son and uh you know unfortunately my son my father and janine's father passed away long before my son was born mm -hmm. and uh so we try to tell him stories and uh Hopefully we can get that through to him. Like, you know, this is what we do. And, you know, we try to give back as much as we can. We're fortunate that bowling has been good to us in the last, like, 15, 20 years. Um, get up the hill. Mix oh, them up. Yeah. So we've been severely fortunate uh, and that my father told me one time, and he only told me this once as a kid, you give back to the sport that gives you so much. And I have no idea why I remember that. But when we got into the position where we could start helping more, uh, in a financial way, we, we've decided to go that route. And obviously, Neva, to me, um, I said this at the Hall of Fame banquet, I don't think there are people more than myself and Chris Viali who love, and I know so many people love Neva, Becky Craig Lanes, and everybody that put so much effort into it oh, absolutely. over the years, but I don't think there's anybody that loves Neva more than Chris Viali and myself uh, who really work, meaning like not the bowling part of it, but just the club itself. Uh, and we try to get back and in some ways, my wife will be, this will be probably the first time she hears this, but in the last year, I realized that I probably wouldn't have stuck around New England if it wasn't for Neva. I would have left a long time ago. I would have gone back to Pennsylvania. My brother asked me about moving home when my father was sick um, before he passed, you know. But I love bowling here. I love bowling in New England. I love the people here. Obviously, we have a lot of friends, and uh, so for us and for me personally, I don't see myself any other place a lot of times, you know. And we love Pennsylvania, too. We have family mm -hmm. down there, and mm. 
but this is where I want to be. This is where we like being. We, I love this. I love the people of Neva. And I don't think people realize just how, for me, it's, it has been life-changing. Great and shot. And Chris always mentions it's, it's, it's a club. Everybody, you know, you, you, you yeah. develop these relationships. You get to see people that you don't get to see on a daily basis. Exactly. You make friends that, you know, otherwise you would have probably never met before. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, again, for me personally, you know, Chris, and, and I, I can't say thank you enough. Growing up, I started um, – I started bowling right competitively when I was in my teens, so I was kind of a late bloomer. Um, you know, some injuries in other sports, and I, I took up bowling because I, you know, I still had that competitive aspect to me. And I, I always remembered growing up that your event was my favorite one to bowl. Yeah, the Buddy's Pro Shop Open. Never, I never had the fortune of winning. Yeah, I finished. I finished hard. second once. Yep. yep. Um, still the biggest trophy I ever won <laughs> for second place, which is which is fun. Um, but you were always. You know, the an ambassador to the sport, always somebody that I could look up to. Always, in, oh, well, even, even just coming here to Bowl JBT, um, always somebody you can ask questions That's to, talk to, I... look for advice. And again, I, I think I speak for everybody when we say thank you for everything you've done. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, and I did. I wasn't fortunate enough to meet your dad, but yeah. I've heard unbelievable things. And just hearing you talk about him, I can I can tell how You're phenomenal of a person he was. He was known as a, so I, I did read a thing this morning and I said, I, you know, if anybody had the opportunity to read the plaque in the window, uh, the old JBT newsletter that Chuck Pisano put into words more than I could probably ever say about my father. Because um, he did, my father did work with Chuck and they, he was known as a raffle man. My father would go do oh the ball raffles. He was telling us the story. And you would awful hear him across the entire awful building. Tickets. Yep, he was so very loud. Um, we always called them travel tickets because it was our chance to take that money. The we were raffling off uh, JBT spots, weren't they? Yeah, they did spot. Yep. They did free entries. They did bowling balls. Uh -huh. my, and my father would donate a lot of balls to it. Your father also started um, the shirts to wear. Yep, he started getting people to wear JBT shirts to, with to the logo shirts. on them. That's awesome. And then their name on the back. For my father, for my father, JBT was his family. Uh, it's a big shot here for John. Oh, oh wow! Nice shot. Time. We have some interesting scores. Let's talk about that real quick. Can you want to bring, the, can you bring the board up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Amanda's on the approach. The scoring pace is uh, interesting. Very close here, within like 20 pins of everyone's within 20 of each other. So one thing, that's going to go a little high. All right. I say, I think on that lane, she had gone flat 10, flat 10, the last two frames. Yep. Um. Mm -hmm. And then t we've seen t we saw Tim's ball really check off of it too. Yes. So, yeah, like I said, so we, I, I can always say we've been very fortunate. And my father, like I said, has been a huge part of what we have. Uh, and I, all I can do is ever thank him. And I try to do that by being an ambassador. Uh, luckily, we are fortunate to be friends with like who I consider the best ambassador in bowling, Parker Bone. And so I try to watch him and learn. Mm -hmm. Um. But, yeah, there's so many, uh, like I said, we're just lucky, and I'm glad to be a big part of the club or be able to help out as much as we can. All right, big shot here for yes, Tim. Yes, skid. Oh, oh we'll get the nine out. This is, a, this is not easy on this because the so ball won't pick up down lane. It is, makes it interesting because Tyler can get up here and triple. Yep, and he's back he's ahead of Tim. And he's ahead of Tim at that point. Um, John is on a double. That looks pretty good. Ooh, four pin. I'm telling you what, we're gonna be we're gonna have a barn burner here. Yeah, we're we're tech. we're gonna come down well, to the ninth and the last That happened the last uh, set too, where all of a sudden this is a tough spare. You told the guy get off. the back one. He wow, did. Wow, he got it. Yeah, uh, Janine, like last uh, exactly last we eliminator, we thought the scoring pace was gonna be around 210, two. 20, and then everybody threw a three bagger. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt like Milligan. They figured out. We haven't seen anybody figure it out yet, except for John so far. And Tyler's pretty close. Wait, realistically. I mean, we can be in the one eight baggers are tough, but John's gone four nine four nine on the yeah. right lane twice. He's, he's, dead he's hit the pocket over. every yep. shot. All right, so let's see what we're looking at here. Amanda has two oh one out. John is two forty six. Tyler has two oh six, and Tim has two eleven. So yeah, we're within single digits. And as John is stepping up here again, I do want to just mention Great shot. all of our sponsors oh. here again. Um, everybody that you know sponsors Neva here, uh, starting of course with Tony and Susan Renaud, adding a thousand dollars to the Masters. 
East Mitchell Bowling Supplies, Vinny Grazan adding uh, $500, plus sponsoring the golf outing. Again, can't mention that enough. It's a great event. Great if you event. can get out there and play, it's a lot of fun. Better Bowling Concepts, William Daly adding $500. Um, Storm Products International, uh, Leanne Holzenberg. Again, adding two balls to every event. Uh, mentioned Stone it earlier, Lauren high. Hoffman was the raffle winner. And let me just double check who was the first out. Uh, Cameron Beardsley at plus 44. So they were our ball winners here today. Congratulations. Uh, Chris Forey, Buddy's Pro Shop. Again, well, thank, you, again. thank you for everything that you do. Uh, Chris Vialli, as you mentioned, Cambridge uh, Credit Council. Not enough credit is given to that man for the work he puts in. Hmm. Was that a pun there? Not enough credit for Cambridge Credit Council. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 3500 for the invitation. Very good. I wasn't even paying attention to what I said. Sorry. Uh, Logo Infusion, Keegan Kenny uh, sponsors the champion shirts. Yep, Ken uh, Keegan, yep. Uh, I'm sorry, so, Kenny so, Keegan. Saw so him in Vegas uh, we had breakfast. Uh, John Van He Strike Effects Pro Shops, 500 into the general prize fund. Chris Sand Turbo Grips, 500 into the general prize fund. Great spare. Uh, Bruce Hall, not here with us here today, but he bowled great. He bowled great um, again. He bowled great last night. Tech Vision. Uh, adding $1,000 to the 1,000th event. Again, we're eight away from that. We're so very close to that. Uh, Jeff Barton, Yankee Lanes, Keen, uh, adding 2,000 to the general prize fund. Rich Reynolds, Bullwinkle's Pro Shop, adding 500 to the general prize fund. Al Casper, uh, Savage Arms, adding 500 to the general prize fund. Callahan's Bolarama, as I mentioned, that's where the 1,000 tournament's gonna be. Yep. Uh, thank you again, Lisa Callahan. They're adding $5,500. Oh, uh, went up then. <laughs> 2500 for the uh, the Callahan's event uh, and an extra 2500 for the, the uh, uh, number 1000. Uh, DJ's Pro Shop, John Zawalik, uh, adding 500 to the general prize fund. Uh, many styles of bowling, Lou Moreau, adding 500 to the general prize fund. Roger Burrell, uh, Bloomfield Electric, adding 2500 to the Masters. Uh, GMS Concrete, Clay Schwartz, adding 2500 1500 for the doubles, and 1000 to the over-under. Uh, Paul Sylvia Dexter adding 500 to the general prize fund. Uh, Tony Mendiola, KR Strike Force adding 1,000 to the general prize fund. Grog Monster Sports, Greg Flamon, my old teammate. Again, thank you, 500 for the general prize fund. East Coast Sports Investors, Jeff Dawson, again, 500 to the general prize fund. Jeff Barden uh, for Manchester uh, adding 5,000, which is 1,500 for the seniors and, 20, uh, and an additional 2,000 uh, for the singles events. Uh, Ideal Bowling Concepts, Keith Lang, 500. Uh, DJBT, Jeff Purchase, 500. Uh, that's going to be 20, uh, 250 for the general fund, 25, uh, 250 for the uh, youth event. Uh, UseBowlingBalls.com, uh, Mitchell Pincus, 500 to the uh, general prize fund. And, of course, Island Bowling Supply, Joe Farley, as we mentioned earlier. Like and share the feed for the final match. You have a chance to get into the raffle uh, for two bowling balls. And, and Matunas has punched his ticket. We're going to go right to the scores here so you guys can take a so look. So the big one is Amanda, Tim West, and Tyler are all within nine pins of each other. I missed a lot while reading all the sponsors. But, yeah. again, thank you for everybody. <laughs> Hell, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, yeah, John is going to be in. He's coasting. Even if he, even if he opened, he was uh, – well, actually, would could not have been in it. Uh, actually, what, he was in the 200. So Tim West can only get to 99. So he was in as long as he got – he could just I think he needed a pin. No, no, no he, went he was 201. He was in no matter what. Yeah. Right, Amanda's going to be uh, 180 here with the spare. And um, well, she's in trouble. Yeah, it's going to come down to Tyler and Tim. Um, seven pin difference. Yep. Again, barring disaster, which we don't wish upon everybody or anybody, everybody. Sorry, everyone. Um, but, yes, uh, John is going to be in our title match. Again, um, just going to point out he was my pick. Uh, yes, he was. <laughs> my wife made two picks. I guess that's what you get when you're uh, the queen coming in. Plus, she's been doing great. I think she deserves a second well, pick. You. She's been here for every every thank round. Thank she watched you. my disaster bowling on 37-38. Yeah, that I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technically, you were her pick earlier. I was. Smart. Not really smart, because I've never gotten <laughs> past a round of eight here. Well, <laughs> I said you had a look in your eye. I tried. I, I said, I said, you what is your... You can go back and listen to the tapes tonight. Wow. She so said, you know what this makes? We have a possibility of a tie. Again. All right, let's go back to... So Tim West 3610 here, which lowered his countdown to 166, where Tyler, if he doesn't strike, would need a 
would, so a strike, he passes him. Strike, he passes him. Oh. Strike, he, now he needs to make that, Tim needs to make it, and then they, whatever, they, they need to match each other. Could be in for our third roll off. Yeah, because even if Tim gets two, he has 75, and then he gets one, he gets 74. So Tim needs. <laughs> like you said, it's going to come down to the 10. The final balls. Wow. And now we're finally into the 180s for, for a round to get by other than the first one. Tim West with the spare and no chop. All over it. And he is lost on both lanes. His ball's been checking up. I would say right now on, on this pattern, I, I would not want to shoot a 4 8. All right, Tyler stepping up here. That's heading at one. And it's got two. All right. Oh. That was dead on line at the four pin to start. It was uh, flashbacks of my second place finish at uh, Cranston. Now, big shot for Tim to force Tyler to match or beat whatever he got. So we're on a best ball situation now. He said this was the trickier lane, so. That's that ball's checking up, that's pretty good. Oh, oh, so he got nine. All right, 185. Tyler, strike to win, nine to tie. Anything less than nine, that would be a loss, so. This has been an incredible day of bowling. It really has. For the win. Come on. Yes. Wow. Oh. Can't throw much better than that. All right. Our final match is going to be Tyler Levesque and John Matunis. I'm going to sign off. We're going to move the camera over to 33 and 4, and we'll be back for the championship match, guys. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Bye.